All right, it's our 26th anniversary, and the reason we're able to be here and able to celebrate is because of this right here. Not to us, oh Lord, it's not us. Not to us, but to your name be the glory. Only to God be the glory. Amen. Because of your love and your faith. Amen. So that's my prayer for today. Amen. Um, that's the reason why we're here. And um, there you go. I think there's only more gospels and more than John. Um, and so I'm just here to clarify that I'm not up here to share a new gospel or something, not the book of Kevin or the book of Daniel. Wait, there's a Daniel in the Bible. This second Daniel or the book of Ruel today. Um, there's the gospel also means the good news, right? So um, if you look closely at your bulletin, underneath the fifth gospel, it says my life. And so today I'm up here to share um, the good news um, of how God has changed my life. And um, <clears throat> In Romans 1.16, I believe, it goes along the lines of, um, it is because of the power of God. It is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And so, um, as I'm up here to share today, um, if you guys know me, I am terrified of speaking in front of people. I don't like public speaking. I don't like that everybody's looking at me, but it's because of the power of God that I'm able to be up here to share with you guys today. And praise God for this, because I love God, and I'm up here because I want to proclaim that I believe. And so today, as I share my section, which is on God's forgiveness, um, is that <clears throat> it's not that I'm sharing my life, it's I'm sharing what God has done in my life to be able to stand up here, even having the guts to stand up here and share with you guys. So, um, let me pray, okay. <laughs> God, um, just wanna thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness and your love um, to this church and just continue, continually um, blessing us and letting us um, grow in your fruitfulness, oh God. So we just wanna um, be here and just dedicate this day to you. We're in awe. We appreciate what you've done. And now that we're here, oh God, just being able to see um, all these ministries. Uh, I, I thank you, Lord, for JL for leading, oh God. I thank you for Thea and all the youth, oh God, just being able to step up and share this joy of love towards you, oh God, and that we could be able to share it with one another. So thank you for this time, and may the glory all be to you. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a story. And the story is about a, bo uh, the, a man, a boy, and their donkey. So, once upon a time, there was a boy, a man, and a donkey. And they were going to a market. So they're walking, they're walking, they're walking. And as they're walking, um, a man walks by them. And he he kind of just stops and like, and then the, 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 the man was like, what are you looking at? And he's like, why, why do you have a donkey but you're not riding it? And he's like, oh, you're right. So then he picks up his son, puts him on the donkey, and then they go on. And not, not too long later, they run into another group of men. And the group of men are like talking to each other, and they're like, look at that guy, you know, lazy boy just sitting on the donkey. And the poor dad, he's so old, he's walking. And he hears this, and he's like, oh, you're right. So he gets off, the boy gets off, he's like, Dad, you can go on. He's like, yeah, my back hurts in a month, so. And so he gets on, and now they're going now. Now they're almost halfway there to the market, and um, another group of people come by. This time a group of ladies, and they're like, hey, And so right now, the dad is sitting on the donkey, and they were like, what kind of a father is this? Why is he letting his little boy walk? Like, who does that? Like, let your boy go. And he heard this and he's like, not again, okay, and I, just sit with me, we'll ride the donkey together. And they're going and they're going. And so the market is on the other side of the bridge and they're right at the foot of the bridge. And then there was this big crowd and they're all laughing and they're like, why are you both on the donkey? Look at him, he can barely walk. He's like on his knees now. Like, what are you doing? You're overworking the donkey. And um, they were like, ugh. Oh, the man gets off and he just starts thinking, he's like, everything that I do is wrong, what am I doing? Everyone says I'm doing the wrong thing. And then just thinking, what should we do? And then he was like, 
Okay, so insider, this guy is Filipino. Okay? And you know Filipinos love their lechon. Who loves their lechon here? <laughs> okay, so his idea was to take the donkey and carry it like a lechon. You know how they tie the legs and then they, they go like that? So the, the son and then the man, and they're carrying the donkey over the bridge. And they're like, finally, you're going to get to the market. But then the donkey's foot got loose and he kicked the boy. And the boy dropped him. But the thing is, they're in the middle of the bridge. You know what that means, right? The donkey fell into the water. His legs are tied up. He drowned. I'm sorry. The end. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot a part. Um, so behind them the whole time was a Lola. And he was just walking. They were so slow because the donkey was so slow, right? So he's walking. And then he was just like, see? That's why. You please all, you please none. And that's what he said. So you please all and you please none. So the whole time the father was just trying to do what everyone says, trying to like make everyone happy. But at the end, he pleased nobody and they lost the only thing that they had. And so why do I share this story with you guys? I don't know either. Um, <laughs> wait, I'll look at my notes and then I'll remember why. <laughs> okay. So I share this story with you because, so we're talking about the book of Colossians. And so the people of Col uh, Colossians, the Colossae, they were dealing with the same kind of thing. Like they were being peer pressured almost, but in a cultural way. So an example is that um, in their time and where they were living, they were worshiping like Greek gods, Roman gods, and they had like a god to go over here. And they're like, okay. I'm gonna pray for love, like, Lord, fix my love life, please. And then he would go, and then there's another God for, like, if you wanna pray for, like, your marriage, or you wanna pray for your work, or your health, they had, like, a lot of gods. And then Jesus was just, like, another one of them. Like, Jesus wasn't, like, God by himself, he was just another one of the gods to choose to worship. And so, um, so yeah, um, in that time, they were really pressured to um, just do what everyone else is doing and just worship the, those gods. So um, the writer of this book, Paul, um, he wrote this book to encourage the church of Colossae and, and of Colossians. And he wanted to encourage them and he wanted to um, challenge them. So those are the two main things that uh, Paul is trying to do here. He's trying to um, encourage them and he's trying to um, challenge them. And so as we look at the scripture, it says Colossians 3.12. Okay. This is NLT, and if you guys have your Bibles, follow along. And it says, since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentle, gentleness, and patience. And so the first thing I shared with you guys is um, he really wanted to encourage them. So the first line says, God chose you to be the holy people, right? God was really um, encouraging them to say, hey, like, before being a doctor, before being this, before being described as this, first you are my son, and that's who you are. Do not, do not let people say who you are. First, you are my son. And that is what Paul's trying to do, um, Paul's trying to do here. He just really wanted to remind them that in God's eyes that they are loved. And so, Rather than um, like choosing to do what everyone else does, he's encouraging them to have faith in God, even when it's not popular to do so in the time, um, and to be willing to stand up for what is right, um, no matter what others say. And so now, the second half of the verse um, says, um, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And when I was given this, I was given two verses, and I'm like, how am I gonna speak for 10 minutes about this? And I just kept reading it and reading it. And I get how we are given a list of God's attributes of how much he loves us and how we should love like that. And I asked myself, Kevin, how am I supposed to do all this? And I kept reading it and I kept reading it, and what came out to me was the word, you must clothe yourselves. Okay, and so this is where, this is where it gets juicy. Um, so what, what, what do I mean by you must clothe yourself? So, um, oh, I don't have a, 
took care of thing. But um, if you go, uh, so as I was studying this, I went back um, a couple verses, and in Colossians 3, 7 to 10, it says this. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you used, okay, I'll use this instead of that. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger. Here's another list. Just like the other one. Anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Okay, and I share this because we need to be able to get rid of this old we have to be able to take off the old and put on the new. That's what that's what Paul's trying to say here. Um, so by that I mean like we all are sinners, right? And we all um, we all have something that's holding us back. And what God is asking for us to do is to get rid of the old and put on the new. And it's very important that we. We that we don't just do one thing. So we all did ETS, right? Like some of us did ETS. And there's a verse called uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Do you guys know it? Uh, Therefore, if everyone is, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And so it's not just the old has gone and that's it. Because if you say the old is gone, and that's it. No matter what you do, that's that. It's gonna come back, guys. Like you have to cut it completely off and put in something new. So, for example, habits, right? Like if you have a bad habit and you just say like, oh, I'm not gonna do it, and then after you do nothing, it's gonna come back and it's gonna be twice as hard to like push away when it comes back the second time. You have to be able to fill it in with something new, a new habit that will change. Um, so, like an, an example, like. We love basketball, don't we? Basketball, we shoot hoops and stuff. So, and then you, you get home, and then you're all dirty, sweaty, you take off your clothes, and now my friends are like, oh hey, you wanna go out for some food? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I walk out, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I took off my clothes, but I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> so you gotta look like a fool, right? So you gotta be able to also put on the new, and so, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> you got to get rid of the old habits, establish new ones, and doing this, a change um, that is permanent and lasting, it will hold its ground. So whatever you do, just make sure that you um, fill it in with something good. And so the next verse um, is Colossians 3.13. Um, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And so, again, back to the beginning. Our title was The Fifth Gospel, sharing through my life. So I want to share um, an experience in my life that I experienced God's forgiveness. And so, before I met my future wife, she's a good son. Okay, okay, okay. I had, I had, a, I had, uh, I had a really rough relationship. I'm being, being down to earth here, guys. I had a really, I had a really rough relationship, and what happened is we broke up, good terms. But I also had another friend who really liked her, even when we were together, and they eventually like had a thing. And I had so much resentment against this friend of mine. He was my friend. And it, I was very bitter towards him. I would see him at school and I would be like, I don't, I'm like, I'm, I'm so, I'm being so fake. Like, God asks us to put on our clothes of loving, of, here, what does it say? God, God asks us to put on kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I was doing all of that, but it was so fake and it wasn't gonna last. I was, my head hurt, my heart hurt, and for two years, I was like this. I was cold-hearted to this guy. I tried to be nice, but God knew in my heart it wasn't real. And it just destroyed me even more. I was feeling more hurt. I was feeling more destroyed each and every day. And then after like two 
years, two years, I was asked to go to on a mission trip, our first mission trip with the church um, to Dominican Republic. And during this time, I was starting to come back to God. I was away from God for a while. I was starting to come back to God. And I was, ask, I was asking for God to get this out of my heart. I was asking God to get this out of my heart. And it's funny that this was the verse. You remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And God, what God was speaking to me in my heart was that, like, you've been running away for your whole life, you know. I've been sinning. I've been not following God. I've been doing everything that is not what God wants. But he's been patient. He's been, he's been loving me even when I chose not to love him. And... Um, and so, like, I just, I prayed, and he didn't really speak to me, but over time, I kind of, he spoke to me through just affirmation that, hey, Kevin, um, you gotta look deeper. And so I looked deeper, and one of the best examples is, um, um, is Romans 5 8. A lot of you guys probably know this. But God demonstrates his own love for us while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So God's greatest act of love was also his one of his greatest acts of forgiveness towards me. So that's what he was telling me. He was like, look at the cross. Look what I did for you. You weren't even looking at me. You were doing all your foolish things on the side. And look what I was doing for you. I was on the cross. I died for what you are doing, all your foolish things that you're doing before you even looked at me. And now that I'm looking at him, that's what he told me. He was like, look at the cross. Look at the cross. That, that is forgiveness. That is love. If I can do that for you, how much of a small thing you can do to forgive your friend? And so over time, it took time, I forgave my friend. We're cool. We're not really in contact anymore because he's far away um, university, but I was able to forgive him. And this is my experience of how God in my life has shown me what forgiveness is. And it's this great, grand love that I can't explain, but I'm sure Daniel will be able to explain better because his is hitting hard on love. So thank you guys for... Um, just allowing me to be up here. Um, like, again, like, it is by the power of God that I'm able to be up here because, again, I, I, I can't talk in front of people. I'm scared when people look at me. I think people are judging me, but I'm just sharing what's from my heart and what God has taught me during this short time being able to study this word. So I'm going to pass it on to my brother. All righty. So uh, happy uh, 26th anniversary. Praise God, huh? So, yeah. Um, thank you, Kevin, for that awesome um, message uh, on forgiveness. And uh, so I'm up here about to talk about love with you guys. It's my first time talking in front of such a large audience. But uh, as, as, uh, as Kevin said, this is not me. This is none of us. The only reason why we come up here is to glorify and share his, it shares love, share what he's done through our hearts. Regardless of anything that we've done, regardless of who I was before, I'm not defined by who I was, I'm defined by who, whose I am, and I am Jesus' son. Amen. So yeah. this is why I love going to talk So we look at Colossians 3, 14 and 15. We can all read this together. Um, so one, two, three. Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Amen. So, um, as you can see from here, um, Paul continues in verse 14 with uh, the analogy of clothing yourselves with these virtues, right? Um, as, as Kevin described earlier. So, um, as God's chosen people, these virtues, everything, all the virtues, gentleness, patience, humility, we got to hold on to these things. 
as his people, to show people. And we regard those traits, those important virtues, uh, we gotta, it's got to be at the top of our list. Um, and we've got to strive, strive towards putting those clothes on. Um, so, as you can see in the beginning, uh, above all, clothe yourselves with love. Paul says, as Paul says in the beginning, he is stressing that above all these, above all those virtues, above all the acts that you do for people to make it seem like you're good, if love isn't at the center and isn't at the top, mm. it's useless. Mm. <laughs> love is indispensable. Paul is stressing that love is indispensable, especially love for one another. Everyone here, we are all one in Christ. We are all one in the body. How can we not... How can we love others who haven't found Christ if we can't love those who are in our own family? Amen. Yeah. Right? Um, so what kind of love do you think Paul is talking about in this verse? Is it the, the cuddly love, you know, <laughs> you want to hang out love, kind of yo bro love, stuff like that? No, I don't think so. so. The type of love he's talking about in that verse is the agape love. Agape love, the unconditional, unconditional love of God. Unconditional love of God. The wholehearted, unqualified, unreserved, unlimited, unrestricted, unmitigated, unquestioning love of God. That is the type of love Paul is talking about here. And we got to hold firm to that. we got to hold firm to that. This beautiful quote that um, my brother Roella is able to show me by the, by the founder of the Christian Missionary Alliance that uh, we're a part of this family, A.B. Simpson, he quotes, I want the love that cannot help but love. Loving like God for the very sake of love. And that is what the agape love is. That is what we as Christians who have experienced God's love have to strive for. Loving like God. He is our example. Jesus' death on the cross is our example. We didn't deserve him to die on that cross. All of us should have been on that cross together. But he died regardless because his love was so, so big for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, as I said earlier, love doesn't cover the virtues. They're meaningless. So we got to be aware of these things. So I'll be giving you an example of um, ways that I find myself... Um, uh, performing or acting certain ways towards people where uh, I forget to clothe myself in love. Because it's tough. Mm -hmm. our, 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 our sinful natures, we want to do whatever is best for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to sprinkle a little love to the people we, we talk to, or, uh, you know, but most of the time it's, it's for our, our own benefit. So for example, um, if I'm uh, going to school, you know, I go to Douglas College and there's a big hill big hill and I'm tired. I'm trying to get by everyone. So I'm at the top and by the time I'm at that door, I'm already I'm panting but I'm not trying to show anyone because, you know. <laughs> but, um, so I'll approach the door and I see that someone's behind you, right? There's someone's about to, you gotta hold the door for someone if someone's behind you. So I'll open the door and I'll wait and I'll give it a nice smile, you know, like hopefully I make their day. And I'll walk in like this. No look, don't look at me. Don't look at me at all. So that one act that was out of love, or love, as soon as it didn't benefit me, and as soon as it didn't make me feel any better, do my, do my, does my attitude change towards this person? Am I ever going to open another door for someone? Huh? Oh, you ungrateful little... <laughs> Stuff like that, right? Here, I'll give you another example. Giving to the homeless. When you give to a homeless person, you, get, you got the change, you feel good, God tells us to give to the homeless, right? Here you go, man. And he looks at it, and he's like, I don't want this. <laughs> like, this is enough. You know what I mean? He, he seems ungrateful to you. That act of love, act of vir those virtues, because he didn't reflect what you wanted to see in him, does my attitude change? Oh, he's ungrateful. I'm not giving to homeless people anymore. Or how about this, if I'm giving to a homeless person, do I give so the other person, the pretty lady across the street, 
looks at me and says, oh, he's a good person. <laughs> right? Okay, I'll take it a step further. Like, at church, when we give to the church, and we have to come up to the front, we give because that's what we're called to do. Nothing we have, nothing we own is ours. And we give back to the kingdom to further the kingdom. But if I'm going up to put in money, am I going up so people see, oh man, he's a good child of God. He's giving money so he's furthering the kingdom. Is, is, that what I'm, is that why I'm putting money in that basket? So other people, I get the glory from other people or am I glorifying God through that? Right? Just, um, it's tough. It's really tough to do that. But praise Jesus for Jesus. <laughs> But, um, and so it, um, so it, yeah, just all those things, it's so easy for us to act some certain way, but deep down, love isn't there, right? And so Paul describes it perfectly in um, his uh, letter to the Corinthians, um, as he says in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secrets, secret plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor, and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Would have gained nothing. Can I... Can... Pray as loud as you want. You can, whatever you want to show people you really are. But if love isn't there, we have gained nothing. Wow. It's home. <laughs> so, to use these virtues that Kevin listed earlier, to use patience, humility, grace, gentleness, we, to use them to their true potential, love must be the glue. It must be the glue that binds it all together. Loving for the very sake of love. And um, as he says in the next verse, in verse 15 of um, Colossians, once we have allowed love to manifest itself in, in the virtues that you have, that love is covering everything, Paul says that the next step is to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. That unexplainable peace that one can only get from knowing that regardless of what this world throws at us, we have salvation. And that salvation is where we rest our peace on. So since we are one body, one church, we are called to peace with one another. And, um, and at the end of the verse, he says to be thankful. Um, the thankfulness he is talking about here is not thankfulness for each other, for your girlfriend or boyfriend, for your dog, for your new car. Not that kind of thankfulness, you know? <laughs> He's not talking about the thankfulness that being thankful for being at peace. He's not talking about being, that, being thankful for that alone. And what he's talking about is being thankful to God for being God. Thankful to God for just everything that he's done. All the love, provision that he's just bestowed upon us. And that is what he wants us to be thankful for. So to summarize, put on love. Because everything is fake if you're not to, if love isn't at the center or covering it. Um, be at peace with one another. And be thankful for what he is doing and what he has done in your life. So I'm going to give a quick little um, little story to uh, kind of wrap this all up of how God's, God showed me his love and how that love is making me do what I'm doing now, why I'm up here, why I can speak like this, why I can love others. So as some of you know, a few years ago, um, I had a near-death experience in the Philippines. And so to give some backstory, prior to that trip, one of the reasons I went on that trip was because I knew God, but I didn't know about Him. I, I heard about Him, but I didn't experience Him for myself. And so I believed in God, but everything I was doing was completely against what He wanted me to do. 
I was in this world. God was in the back seat. I was doing what I wanted. You name it. Partying. Experimenting with alcohol. Experimenting with drugs. Women. You name it. Whatever this world had to offer, I was ready to take it. And I went on that trip hoping that I would find something. That I would find God. Find myself. You know? And so, fast forward to the Philippines. In the ocean. No life jacket. No one around. And I'm, I'm, I, my body's given up. I have nothing left. I have nothing left. And I'm looking in the sky. All right, God. I'm ready. I'm done. There's nothing I can do about it. And at that moment, he, just by his power and his power alone, he saved me. Some way, somehow, everything that could have went wrong, went wrong, but he still saved me. And so getting out of that, uh, coming home to that, or even just hours after that experience, I asked him, God, why? Why did you save me? Everything that I was doing leading up to this was against what you wanted me to do. I don't love others. I do everything for me. Why? Why am I here today? Why am I here today? Why can I still stand and do whatever I want to do? And he reminded me through that, as I said earlier, I am not defined by what I did in the past. My love is unconditional for you. I died on that cross while you were still doing that stuff, and I still looked at you, and I still called you my child. What a, praise God for this love that is available for all of us. We only need to ask for it. And so through that, through that it took me a while. I'm very hard-headed. So it's gonna take me a little while to, to kind of ease into it, you know? <laughs> but through that, act of love from God, it did something throughout my whole being. And because of that love, I can't help but to do whatever I can in my power to do it and give it to others. To others who may have, may have felt my way, may have felt that they weren't loved, that they weren't enough. And God uses, God will just <laughs> throw it at you at the most random random uh, time. Maybe you'll be in the middle of ocean like me. Maybe you'll be just sitting here and God's asking, do you want my love? So, and because of that love, as I said, I can stand up here and proclaim his love for you and me. I can live out my love knowing, I mean, live out my life knowing that I am loved, that I am worthy. And what a joy that is to say. And that's why I can say it here confidently because of his love. And so I'll just end it off with this. Brothers and sisters, let love be the foundation that all we do. Of all we do. Loving for the very sake of love. No conditions. Reflecting the image of God Reflecting the image of God and His love that dwells in me and that dwells in you. So yeah, are you gonna choose to love today? It took me a while, so He'll show His love to us, and He has, and He will, forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay, so that's my end. Hello. Can we get one more clap for them? I'm ashamed of my Tagalog now. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Good. I, I was told you can hear me in the back. Can you guys hear me in the back? I'm good? All right, awesome. Um, yeah, so we had Kevin talk about forgiveness. Daniel's talking about love. And uh, my one word is together. As we do this together. Happy anniversary, right? Let's pray together. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this uh, amazing day you've set up. Thank you for the sun, uh, God. Thank you for 26 years that you've been faithful to us, God. And you haven't turned your back in those 26 years, and we're yeah, still here because right. of you. We love you so much, Lord. I pray you bless our service today. Bless every single person here. Uh, thank you for the cross. 
God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, last month, last, thank you so much, Andre. Not yet. We're good. So, uh, last month, uh, last month, I turned, I turned 29. And it still hurts to say. <laughs> so, the church would call me Kuya. That's, that's how much I hurt. I'm older than the church. So, uh, <laughs> it hurts. Because to some people, I'm really, really old. I look at some people, I, am I still now generation? I don't know. We can, then, then generation. <laughs> but, um, so, it's weird because when you turn 29, the gifts that you get are not as good as when you were younger. Um, I got a lot of handshakes. As gifts. You're 29, oh, okay. Happy birthday. Um, it's, the gifts are different. Actually, the, the cards are different. I have a card right here. It's a, it's a birthday card. And it's, and it's different. Here you go. It goes, to Roel, you are old. 29 years old. Get married. That's, that's, the entire, that's the entire, thank you for that. That's the entire uh, card right there. But as I, as I turned 29, I, I did something that I, don't, I didn't normally do, but I started to look back on uh, how I got here. How did I get to where I'm at right now? And uh, I was thinking, what if the church, New Life Alliance was the same, and it was to look back at how it got to where it is today. And that's, that's kind of my theme, right? Together, how we got there. So I'm going to be reading from uh, Colossians chapter 3, 16 to 17. Um, there's no... Uh, ver okay. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom, with all the wisdom he gives. Sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So how did we get to where we are? Um, I think one of them would definitely be prayer. We're heavy on prayer. We have prayer meeting every week, uh, if you guys want to come to those. And, and I think prayer to us is very important. So that's one way. Another way, teach and counsel. So another way is through the word, right? Through the word of Christ. And Apostle Paul is writing this as, as these guys set up. Apostle Paul is writing this. And, and through the word of Christ can mean two things. Number one, the word of Christ can be uh, the teaching of Jesus, right? So things like loving God and loving one another. Um, the second thing, though, the word of Christ can also be the gospel message of Jesus. Or in the Greek, euangelion, good news of Jesus Christ. And I feel like both of these go hand in hand. Ultimately, the good news of Jesus and teachings of Jesus lead us to action on our part. So number one, we got here through the word of Christ. Number two, we got here through worshiping together. So if you actually look in the Bible, the first song that's ever recorded is um, when the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea with Moses. That's the first song ever. And it made me think of what if our attitude coming into worship, what if it was that? What if it was in the posture of a slave who had just been freed? Right? What if, what if that was our posture when it came to worship? I think uh, us as a church, we do a great job with worship. And I was listening to a sermon. There's this, there's this student, his name is Abraham Wu. He's a, he's a student at Regent Seminary. And he was talking, and this is insane, he was talking about how worship transcends time. Right? We worship the same as those people who crossed the Red Sea. We worship the same God. Isn't that interesting? We worship as the saints did. We worship um, just as they did years and years and years ago. That we worship just as a church in Acts. Not only does it transcend time, but it transcends everything. You look outside, creation worships God. Right now, actually, angels are, are worshiping God. So worship was one way that we, we, we got to where we were at. 
So number one was the word of Christ. Number two was worshiping together. And so there is one name above every name, as Paul would say, that we do all this in. And my dad said it great to start off. The name of Jesus Christ. So we worship together. We do the word together in the name of Christ. And verse 17. So in Colossae, uh, like Kevin was saying, there were many, many gods. So when apostle, there's so many gods that I think, if you're a Christian, you'd probably be considered atheist because you only believed in one God. Whereas they had every, every other kind of God that they could worship. And so Paul is here saying, he's saying that there's actually only one that we worship and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the name above every name. So whatever you do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, through him to the Father, to God the Father. Because I can say it is in that name, the name of Jesus Christ, that we are where we are today. Um, Queen Alden told a great story at our, uh, our 25th last year about how Pastor Rick was, was church planting this church. And he went to the Lions and, and kind of said, I'm, I want to church plant in North Vancouver. And they said, that's a bad place to church plant a Filipino church. And he said, you can do it. We'll, we'll let you do it. The only thing is, you're going to be alone in doing it. And Pastor Rick said, we're not alone. We're not alone. We have Jesus with us. So that's something that I'll always carry with me. We do everything. New Life, I pray that New Life Alliance does everything in the name of Lord Jesus. And uh, I want to talk actually a little bit about our mission trip too. Because it's a way that I kind of encountered Christ. Um, when we went to El Salvador, uh, every, this is our, this is our uh, kind of the way that we, we went in thinking, well, I just, I'll just do whatever you want me to do. Right? Just let me serve, I'll do whatever. But a little bit, I kind of wanted to, to really like, this is my first mission trip, so I didn't know what was gonna happen. And I was kind of thinking we would be kind of saving people left and right. <laughs> like maybe people would come up and we would just, you know, okay, sinner's prayer, let's go, right? <laughs> or, or maybe we'll line them all up and we'll just baptize everyone. Okay, next. Right, that's what I was thinking as we're, as we're going to El Salvador. So I'm, I'm there, I'm thinking, I'm going to become a pastor. This is going to show me, this mission trip will show me how to become a pastor. Right, so as soon as we land, they're like, okay, I'm ready. Like, I'll do whatever. Okay, uh, well, you're going to do construction for five days straight. <laughs> Nine to five construction. And uh, I had, I, I ne look at my hands. I've never done anything like that before. So... I'm welding, I'm, I'm uh, putting up this wall in the church, and every single night we had a debrief. So we'd sit and we'd talk about what, what we did, right, what we did that day. And the Sunday school, ki uh, the Sunday school teachers were, oh, I really, like, we really helped some kids out today. We really blessed them today. Right, the worship team, yeah, you know what? We're working on their spiritual formation. They're really getting changed today. Well, what about you? Um, I carried a, a heavy bar and I painted outside, right? So it, that, was, that was what I was doing. And it wasn't until the very last day that Jesus kind of showed me, hey, this is what we're doing here. You see that church that we were working on, it had been there before we got there. That church was there long before I was there. That church will be there long after I'm gone. But God had given me the opportunity to just work on that church at that one moment. And I think that every single person in here today has that exact same story. So as I close, I'm just going to um, tell, my, uh, tell my fifth gospel. I had... Um, and it's crazy because my fifth gospel actually comes together well with the uh, church itself. So I've been going through a rough patch. I have a, a, 
a very famous pastor dad and um, mom and mom. <laughs> And I had been going through the probably a really, really, really uh, rebellious time where I wasn't really thinking about um, about what was going on in my life and what was happening with God. And I remember just one night, a lot of nights, I would go to sleep saying, "If I don't wake up tomorrow, that's kind of okay." I don't know if anyone you felt that way before, but I, I was kind of, if I don't wake up tomorrow, that's okay. And um, I saw God moving in the church. I couldn't quite pinpoint it. I just thought maybe uh, Kevin and Daniel were seeing something I wasn't seeing, so I started hanging around people in the church. Get this. In the when my dad says shake hands, right? Everyone, let's go shake hands. I would sometimes come to church just for that. Because in my life, it was kind of the only time someone asked me how I was doing. And it was from the, ch it was from the church. And you guys probably don't even realize this, but when I would come here and shake someone's hand and they'd ask me, well, how are you doing? Or give me a hug. That was kind of the only time that that ever happened in my life. <laughs> and I, well, I went to bed one night and I remember it being 4 a.m. and Jesus was literally knocking on my heart. And I woke up it being 4 a.m. And I heard Jesus, he's, he's, trying to, he's trying to get me up. And I said, you know what, Lord, we can do this tomorrow because I got work. <laughs> I got work, so I got to get up at 7 a.m. So let's do it tomorrow, go back to bed. But no, I got right back up. And it had been about 11 years since I had prayed. Earnestly, it had been 11 years since I had prayed. And I said this. God... I am so broken. I don't have any purpose. But if you want to use me, I'm all in. I'm all in. And it was such a quick progression from, from that moment on with the guidance of the, the pastors in this church with the love of everyone in this church. It was because every single person in here showed me forgiveness, showed me love. Together, in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's my prayer today. I'm just so thankful.